Roaming is one of the most misunderstood concepts from new players. A lot of new players and even some experienced players don't understand the objective of roaming. In this video I'll be showing you how to roam to delay the attacker's push and win more games. Now the first thing I want to talk about is what actually is roaming? Roaming is when any defender doesn't spend the majority of the round on site. The objective for the roamer is to delay the attacker's time, flank, and hold important parts of the map. The roamer should be the first thing the attackers have to deal with when attacking the bomb site. There isn't a set number of roamers for any given round, it all depends on the site and map, but I would recommend 2-3 to three people off site. If you're new to Siege, you might be wondering why do you want more than half of the team off site? Well, the reason you want that many people off site is so the attackers aren't able to just collapse on the site, backing all five defenders into a corner. But on the other hand, having just one roamer is just as bad because the attackers will drone them out, collapse on them, and kill them. That's why having two to three roamers is essential to winning rounds on defense. Now that I've gone over what roaming is, I want to talk about the different types of roamers. There are two general types of roamers, the first being a shallow roamer. This type of roamer is someone who is not on site but very close to site so they can rotate back to site very quickly. As a shallow roamer, you don't want to be in any random room close to site. You want to choose rooms that are very crucial points to winning the round. Now I'm going to give you some examples. The first example is when defending bar slash gaming room on chalet. A good way to shallow roam is holding above from library. You can also hold library when defending master slash office on the same map. Another example is holding onto gym slash bedroom on clubhouse when defending CCTV. Things to avoid when shallow roaming is roaming in rooms with too many angles onto you, like security on border. Now yes, you do want to hold on to security as long as possible, ideally, but you really can't because there's too many ways that you can be shot and there's not enough reinforcements for a team to defend it. Now let's talk about the other type of roamer, the deep roamer. This type of roaming is much farther off site, making it harder to get back to site. This type of roaming is much more difficult and can be much more risky. As a deep roamer, you want to slow down the common initial pushes from the attackers. An example of this is when defending kitchen on cafe, holding the hatches and stopping vertical play from Zagar is a very good way to stop attackers from executing their push. Playing above hatches is a very common way of deep roaming that I haven't mentioned in my videos before, so I wanted to talk about that today. Another way to deep roam is to play below with a C4 as Valk or Pulse, either scanning them with your heartbeat sensor or pinging them on your Valk cam to know where to throw the C4. A common misconception about deep roaming is hiding in corners hoping to be misdroned. In higher ranks there's barely any misdroning and once they've droned you out they're going to trap you in a corner and kill you. Now I want to talk about what operators you have to choose from for roaming. There's a lot of options and most ops that can be used for shallow roaming can also be used for deep roaming and vice versa. But some are stronger than others in specific situations. The best operators to run for shallow roaming are Legion, Capcan, Ella, Doc, Solus, Thorn, and Oryx. The best operators for deep roaming are Valk, Cav, but keep in mind her loadout is pretty trash so you've been warned. Pulse. Vigil, Mozzie, and Warden. Now keep in mind the ops I just named for each type of roamer. Just because they're on one side doesn't mean they can't do the other. They're just better at those categories. Now that you know what roaming is, what type of roamers there are, and what operators you should be running, let's talk about the main objectives of any roamer. Number one, wasting time. Probably the most important aspect of any roamer's game is wasting time. As a roamer, attackers should have to deal with you and use utility on you if you're doing your job correctly. The reason why wasting time is so important as a roamer is because when you waste time, it's harder to set up a push as an attacker. They can't drone as much, they can't peek slowly or safely, which is going to equal free wins for you and your team. Number two. Knowing when to get out and play your life. If you get an early kill, don't just leave immediately. Still try to waste more time because when you take out an attacker, their utility isn't going to be used fully, but yours can be. A very good tip is if you get two kills as a deep roamer, then revert yourself into a shallow roamer to try to waste more time and utility. Number three, trade your life. What I mean by that is if you're coordinated with a teammate that is also roaming, put yourselves in positions where if one of you goes down, the other one picks up the kill right after. It's very easy but not done enough even when not roaming. Now I want to go over some mistakes that a lot of inexperienced players make. Number one being trapping yourself. You want to have multiple ways to escape a situation. Don't put yourself in a random room with one exit so the other team can trap you. Number two, getting skipped over. What I mean by that is if you're defending kitchen on cafe, holding the hatches in vertical play in cigar is a pretty good play, but if there's one minute left in the round and your teammates are calling that they are in sight and you did nothing, you got skipped over, okay? So if your first idea was to hold the hatches in vertical play on cafe, then you gotta realize the, uh, when the other team isn't gonna go for them and just adjust your room. And to finish off the video, I wanna give a few little tips before we finish here. One being, don't be afraid to bring utility and reinforcements off site. I do this a lot. 
As long as your team doesn't need them, then you can bring it offsite. Also, roaming is so much better in a team. So don't roam every round solo queue and expect it to work out every time. All right, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed or learned anything from this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Real quick before we completely end the video, I want to thank you all for the comments and subs I've been getting. I didn't think I would be getting this much support on my first two videos, which I know it's not really like a crazy amount, but it's more than I thought. So thank you. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. Peace. Bye bye.